Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. We're going to talk about a tool that I don't feel is used very often, but it's called the Universal Manipulator, and it has some pretty neat features. I'm going to create a sphere to demonstrate. And over here in your toolbox, you have your Move Tool, Rotate Tool, Scale Tool, and then here, right here, Universal Manipulator. Click it, and you have this crazy gizmo show up. It's very similar to the multi tool that is used for extruding faces and such, where it kind of combines the move tool, scale tool, and rotate tool all in one big tool. And it's very complex looking and kind of scary, but it's actually pretty easy to work with once you understand how all the parts work. Now, right off the bat, you can see the big friendly move tool in the center. And if you click and drag on it, it works like any move tool. However, it has one feature where it shows you the distance that you're moving the object. You can see that little blue number. Hopefully you can see that in the, in the uh, capture. Little blue number is telling me the number of units I'm moving this sphere. And it works for any direction. Now one thing that's also neat about this is if you move it, if I rotate this and then go back to my universal manipulator and I'm moving it at an angle, it gives me all the different values for the distances I'm moving it. It, I'm, it gives me the distance you can't see my finger but I'm pointing at the screen right now the uh, red line is the distance in the X direction, the X axis the blue line is the distance in the Z axis and then the yellow line is the hypotenuse between those two giving me all the angles or the distances in my triangle that I'm making with this diagonal movement so it, this works pretty well if you're trying to get exact distances and numbers. You can also just click the move tool in any of the axis handles and it gives you a text box that you can type in a value. Let's say 10 and it will move 10 units in that direction. Let me undo back so that my sphere is lined up with the world. There we go. Again if I click a handle but if I move the camera it goes away. So you have to click it and then type it in, say 2.5, enter. And it'll go 2.5 units in the x axis, x direction. So that's pretty handy, for, especially if you're, like I said, trying to get exact positions. And that's the move tool in a nutshell, although there's one more feature I forgot to mention. This little blue circle in the middle. As I rotate my camera, if right now you can see that the blue circle is right there, oriented along the z axis handle. And now if I rotate my camera up, you can see the switch that happens and the little blue circle is oriented with my Y-axis handle. So literally what that means is if I click on that little circle in the middle and drag, because at the moment it was oriented with the Y-axis, with the green handle, I'm constrained on the Y-axis. So it's not going up or down, it's just going in the uh, X and Z axis directions and not going up and down. If I were to just use the normal move tool and click and drag this around, it's going up and down and all over the place and it's hard to tell. If I move it like over here, it's higher now. If I move it over here, you know, it's lower. So it's going all over the place and uh, there are ways to help with that but I'll go over that in a, a different video <laughs> since we're talking about the universal manipulator for this one so I bring back my universal manipulator and click and drag in the middle here again I'm constrained you can see that I'm right there on the uh, grid and right there on the base it's touching the grid just drag it over here still touching the grid it hasn't moved up and down and this works in all axes depending on where that little blue circle is oriented So if I click and drag it with the Z axis, I'm constrained along the Z. It's not going any further in the Z direction, either front, forwards or backwards. It's just going along the 2D plane of the other two axis directions. Like so. And that's the movement section of this manipulator, this universal manipulator. Let's talk about scale. <clears throat> you can see along 
the sides of this box that forms a, no, a number, 7.8 in my example. This is how, uh, this is the scale of this cube. You can literally just click it and type in a different number, 5 for example, enter, and it will change the scale to whatever number you type in. Let's say 10. There. That's a way to get exact scale. You can also click on these little blue boxes in the corners. And it's all based on the direction that you drag. There is no handle to choose a direction to scale. If I click on this blue handle and drag up, it scales in like this. Click and drag this way, it scales in like this. Click and drag that way. And these numbers will change to tell you the uh, scale, how big it is in that direction. And now at last we have the rotate handles that are along these corners. If you click and drag on one, you can see in, right now in my case it just rotates along the center axis in whatever direction that I choose. If you, hit, if you hold down the control key and click and drag on the rotation handles, it will rotate in 5 degree increments, which can be useful for getting exact numbers as opposed to rotating 4.6 or whatever. Now there are a few options to go over, just a couple. If I double click on the Universal Manipulator uh, tool icon over here. You can see my two options are transform space and rotate around. Transform space right now is set to local, meaning that if I rotate my sphere, the move handles and such are aligned with the sphere. If I set it to world, this box and these handles are always aligned with the scene and not with the sphere itself. So if I rotate the sphere, the box will change to be oriented with the world. Back to local. So you can switch back and forth. And rotate around. This one's pretty handy. Right now it's set to rotate around the pivot point, which is the middle of the sphere. So whenever I click these rotation handles, it just spins the sphere in place. But one thing that's cool is you can also rotate around the center which means that when I click on the rotate handle, it'll pivot on the edge of the bounding box opposite of the handle, like a door swinging open and closed, which is very cool. You don't have to worry about changing the pivot of the object. For example, if you were to create a door for a scene, you can place the door and then use this handy tool to literally open it without changing the uh, act, the pivot point. And one more thing uh, with the scale handles. If I, again, like I showed you before, if you click and drag on one, now with the, uh, because the rotate around has been placed to the center instead of pivot, it actually affects the scale handles as well. Let me go back to pivot real quick. Click and drag on the scale tool and you see it scales in and out from the pivot of the sphere do the center point though, click and drag, it actually sc scales toward the other side of the sphere instead of from the center. So this side of the sphere over here remains stationary while I click and drag, make sure I get the right direction, click and drag toward the other side. So that's another uh, result of choosing the center option and the rotate around options. So I think that's pretty much the universal manipulator in a nutshell. I think I've gone over everything. Definitely let me know if I missed something. Uh, I would definitely want to fix that if I did. Uh, comment, subscribe, like, it definitely helps out. Uh, if you have any suggestions or requests for future videos, I plan to have it all eventually, but 
I'm going to get there one step at a time. So if you want me to go over something sooner than later, definitely let me know. And I really appreciate you watching. Thanks. Bye.